What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Part 7. Please relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, you could subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. In the late 1950s, the Soviet Union spearheaded a campaign to convince the World Health Organization that smallpox could be eradicated. Smallpox is a highly contagious disease that is specific to humans. Insofar as we know, no other species on Earth can get or carry smallpox. In 1977, the last case of smallpox was identified and snuffed out. The disease was eradicated. However, Rather than destroy the final genetic samples of the disease, the Cold War super, powers decided to store it. Some went to the Soviet Union and some went to the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia. The Soviets began a weaponization program. This means that they tried to make a stronger, more contagious, more lethal strain of smallpox. They tried to cross it with other diseases like Ebola, creating entirely artificial chimera diseases they grew smallpox in the lab by the ton and kept it loaded, ready to be fired on missiles into the United States. But it's not a missile that's frightening, a single glass ampule of the stuff. Smashed against the wall of a subway station in New York or Chicago or Tokyo could spark a global outbreak. Very, very few people alive today have been vaccinated for smallpox, and there are but a scant few doses of vaccine available. In the event of an outbreak, our ability to manufacture vaccine would be rapidly outpaced. If the wrong person got their hands on the Soviet smallpox bioweapon, billions could die. Nuclear weapons are bad enough, but they at least require a general war to break out in order to bring about an end to human civilization. A smallpox bioweapon doesn't require a war, just one security breach. Account 2 this one terrifies me. I'm going to be purposely kind of vague about this, since I'm figuring the events in this story are rare. Edit. The stories told in the comments have now made me realize this happens fairly often, and that's very tragic. The events are also mostly speculative, since there weren't any witnesses. I say this to spare you all the multiple probabilities and most likelies that would otherwise be in this post. This is how it was told to me. A family member of mine is friends with a man middle-aged, whose wife sadly died while taking their dog out for a walk through a rural area they were visiting. They had driven up to a farm along the road and gotten out when the dog tore from her grip and ran off. She ran after it to the back of the barn, where the huge open dung cistern was. The farmer wasn't home, so when he came back later in the day, he found her car and thought it weird that a strange car had just been left there. Doors open with no people noticeably nearby. He went around searching for his unexpected visitors and eventually found them. What he found was something I had never even imagined before hearing of this. The dog had fallen into the cistern of deep, liquid waste from the farm animals. The edges on the cistern were way too high up to reach from liquid surface level, and the woman must have panicked because she had jumped in after the dog to save it, and that's where her life slowly and brutally came to an end. The fumes that accumulate from that much dung are very toxic. The woman, after being unable to get back out, had lost consciousness and drowned along with her dog in a pool of cow shit. I can't imagine a worse way to die. I think about it now and then and hope that no one will ever die like that again, poor souls. Account 3 in third grade, a guy came to our school and held our class hostage. He had already killed his wife and was there to kill his kid. The administrators convinced him the kid was not there and to take one of their cars and leave after threatening to kill us multiple times, tying up the gym teacher and dragging someone's grandma around with a knife at her neck. He finally left about 30 minutes later. The police caught him in Indiana on his way to kill his parents. He was convinced the world was ending and he was killing everyone he loved to spare them. The school did worse than nothing. They lied to parents, and no assistance was given to either the kids or teachers involved. The gym teacher never came back, and every time she would see one of the kids at the store or whatever, she had a breakdown. Several of us have PTSD, undiagnosed, for decades. We just thought it was normal. In the 70s, the Chicago public school system was more concerned about their jobs and lawsuits, so they covered it up. Account 4. 
Probably the one about the guy at a local factory who went inside one of the welding machines. I think that's what they are called. To clean or do some kind of maintenance. And somehow, despite all the safety protocols, another employee kicked it on. Apparently, the moment it happened, the employee that did it realized his mistake, but there was no way to stop it once it started the firing cycle. Yes, the man inside died pretty quickly, but I cannot imagine being the person who made such a horrible mistake. Account 5. Two off-duty U.S. soldiers were on a train in France. When walking past a toilet, they recognized the loading noises of rifles coming from inside. They waited outside and jumped the guy when he came out. He was a terrorist who was about to go through the train killing people. Account 6. Ex-girlfriend at just under 18 years old had her father attempt to rape her in her sleep. Woke up to him attempting and struggled endlessly until finally he got up and left. Few days later, he tried to offer her money for sex. A few weeks later, she turned 18, packed up her stuff, and I got her out of the house while he was at work. Over the course of the next three years, I stayed in a relationship with her while she lashed out and completely let loose, cheating, partying, lying, fighting, etc. And it completely ripped the girl's life apart, and she lost all inhibition. I stayed so she had a constant to come. Home. To. We're both in agreement that if I didn't stay, she'd probably be dead. We split up about five years ago, but are now best friends and she's living a great life. It was hard for me not to do something to that dude. Account 7. My brother-in-law is a deranged heroin addict, has been for over a decade. In 2016, he murdered my father-in-law. He attacked him from behind and crushed his head, back, shoulders with a hammer over 50 times. My husband and I were out of town, and he used my father-in-law's phone to text us throughout our trip. He lived with my father-in-law's dead decomposing body for over five days and proceeded to steal his father's belongings and pawn them, drain his bank accounts, and stole his car. When we got home, he fled and sent my husband a text from his dad's phone saying he wasn't feeling well and was in the bathroom. That's when my husband found the body. He's in jail now serving 24 years, but it still haunts me. Account 8. Couple years back, there was a dude doing his national service, one night on roving sentry duty, past midnight, he asks his buddy, as in, battle buddy, military dudes should understand that better, I'd think, to wait for him a couple of minutes, he wanted to go to the toilet. Note that as sentries, they weren't supposed to do so during patrol. You have to go before or after. As his buddy was waiting outside, he suddenly heard a gunshot. The dude had used his service rifle to blow his brains out, trouble with the girlfriend and at home. My dudes in the army, voluntary or not, speak the fuck up before you do something stupid. Account 9. In 1972, a Uruguayan plane carrying a college rugby team fell in the Andes mountain range of 50 people. 13 people died in the crash or the following hours. And by the next day, the survivor count was down to 27, which with little food had to resort to eating the bodies of the dead, rationing how much each ate. After that, the remaining survivors made a pact stating that if they died, they would be the next in line for consumption, and that the only bodies that would be used would be the families of those who voluntarily accepted to. They spent 72 days in the hostile environment. By the end, only 16 survived. The most terrifying story, IMO, is when one of the survivors who had broken his leg on the crash, which made him feel useless, noticed that the corpses up for consumption was running out, he secretly stopped eating to die of hunger and become of use for the survivors. Thankfully, one of them realized and managed to convince him to keep himself alive for two weeks more. The rescue team found them within those two weeks. Account 10. Not so much the story, but for the implication, the strip search phone call scam involved a man claiming to be a Leo phoning places of work and asking for female employees or customers to be detained and strip searched, culminating in the Mount Washington scam in which Louise Ogburn was imprisoned in a McDonald's by her manager before being molested, forced to perform humiliating acts and raped by the manager's fiancé at the command of a voice on the phone. Account 11. My ex's father was sergeant of police, so I have the details on this. 
I was up late playing video games. My ex was asleep after surgery, so dead to the world. Back door was cracked open cause the cat was out. I shut the bedroom door to keep the cat out and crawl into bed at 4.30 a.m. And at 6 a.m. my ex woke up, asked me why I'd left the bedroom door open, and went into the living room to discover we had been robbed. We found an empty case of beer in our backyard shed. They had hung out drinking, waiting for me to go to sleep. When they were caught, it turned out they were a pretty nasty group responsible for multiple home invasions and murders. Apparently, they had checked in on us sleeping and decided we weren't worth the trouble. My ex and I are generally light sleepers. Only her pain meds and my all-night gaming session saved our lives. Account 12. A human being is capable of justifying any action for themselves and will always find a way to be the hero in their own narrative. In WW2, for example, every side committed horrible atrocities and they all thought that they were the good guys. Even the Japanese who weaponized the bubonic plague and raped the Chinese capital off the map. Account 13. Once, a friend of a friend was on a Tinder date. She came back home with the guy. They ended up talking for long, and since they had a great time together, the girl let the guy crash at her living room, pull out bed downstairs, while she went off to sleep in her bedroom upstairs. After about 10, 15 minutes, the guy came up to her bedroom, knocked, made a lot of noise, and told her he was very hungry. The friend tried to find something for him in the kitchen. But whatever she suggested, he said no, and was adamant that she go out with him. She got irritated as she didn't know the guy that well, and he was suddenly acting very weird. Just to get him off her back, she agreed to go out. When they finally stepped out in the street, the guy told her that he saw someone hiding behind the curtains in the living room. He wanted her out to make sure they both were safe. Account 14. A girl I went to high school with. Her parents and her little brother left for the weekend to go on some trip, but she had softball practice and couldn't go. She was home alone, sleeping in her bed in a completely dark room. She's startled awake by the loud sound of her bedroom window breaking. She watches as a dark figure slowly crawls into her room through the window. The figure's eyes aren't adjusted to the dark, but it turns towards her because it sees something. This mysterious man inches slowly towards her trying to see what this lump is. He gets his face almost right up to hers before he realizes it's a person in a bed. His eyes widen, and he slowly backs away and crawls back out the window. Account 15. My sister and I saved our family from probable death, injury, twice as children. First time we are in a car driving to FL to visit my grandparents. When we get a couple hours away from our destination, we see the sick colored skies associated with tornadoes, but none have been reported on the radio. My sister, who is less than two years old at this point, starts screaming her head off for food. She has been great the whole trip, but this is the time she chooses. After 20 hours in the car, my parents stop to make her happy before they go crazy. All told, maybe 45 meter to an hour parked. We continue the drive for about an hour, and one of the main roads we would have been on is absolutely ripped to shreds from a tornado. Second time, same thing, headed to FL, but this time we are in GA. I'm in the passenger seat at around eight years old. We are driving in the right lane, and it had been pouring for a while, then stopped. As we were passing an on-ramp, I saw a sports car, I want to say Fox Body, but this was like 25 years ago, flying down the ramp, and there was a big puddle at the end of it. I saw the car and what was about to happen and just hitched my breath in a small gasp. My dad heard me, saw the car, moved and slowed. The car hit the puddle, hydroplaned at 60, F and started to spin multiple times across the highway right in front of us then flipped into the median. Had I not seen it or made the noise, we would have been creamed. 